everyone, Eric here on Alchemy with Zero Phase, and uh, I got a, a short video I want to do, a little demonstration uh, do, uh, to help out with a request that somebody had. They were watching my uh, pixel art video on how to make awesome pixel art, and they wanted to know if there was a way to reverse it, taking pixel art and making a more realistic image, I guess. So we're going to go through and demonstrate that uh, utilizing the um, obviously Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111 uh, but using ControlNet. Uh, we're going to be using the Dreamlike Photoreal 2.0 checkpoint but honestly you could use any checkpoint you want on this. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to uh, use 20 steps on the sampling just to keep things quick. The DPM++ SDE Cross uh, I use that primarily for pretty much everything. Um, especially when using when we're trying to generate photorealistic images um, and we're going to leave everything else the same we're not going to do restore faces even though this does have a face in it but because we're going to be using uh, control net to uh, uh, implement this I don't think we're going to need to do the restore face and if you want you can obviously so what we're going to do is we're going to bring over an image uh, this is a uh, royalty free image just some pixel art that somebody did uh, looks like a, uh, a young girl, she is at a party or in an ice cream shop or whatever, that's kind of how I'm looking at this. I got some balloons in the background, she's holding a bowl of ice cream. Okay, so we're going to enable the uh, control net unit zero. I've got two enabled, I may eventually enable three because I'm learning how to use multiple control nets to uh, control the image. But um, so we're going to enable that, we're going to enable pixel perfect, we're going to allow a preview because I want to see what this is going to look like and we're going to use the canny preprocessor and then we're going to select the canny uh, model. And here's the thing with this, now on the control weight this is where you're going to give the AI freedom to change this image into something else. If we leave it at one it's going to try to retain a lot of the basic shape. Uh, which will include, you know, some probably some of the pixelization. So we want to actually give it some freedom. And I'm going to actually bring this down to 0.5. We're going to try that first. And then uh, what we want to do is put in a description. I've already got a description for this one. I'm going to paste this in here. Just a portrait of a pretty girl with short purple hair, wearing a lavender jacket at an ice cream shop, holding a bowl of ice cream with balloons in the background. Pretty simple. We're going to use my general prompt and my style sheet. And uh, <clears throat> let's do let's do two uh, uh, two in the batch size just to get a couple variations here. Let's uh, do a quick preview of this. Make sure it sees it. Yep, it sees all that. So it's going to get the general shape and outline of everything. And then let's hit render or generate. I keep saying render. I think that's uh, a holdover from when I used to use uh, uh, 3D Studio Max and Maya and all that <laughs> way back in the day. So. Uh, as you can see, it is converting this over to uh, the image, but it's holding the same basic uh, composition of the image that we're trying to pull from. Now, here's the thing. You can see it is obviously in, uh, introducing some of the pixelization as if that was part of the clothing. A little strange. Uh, this one's a little bit better. I don't like those. Let's, uh, let's go back down here. Let's make some adjustments. So there's a couple things you can do. Uh, we can give it a little more freedom. I think in my pre-testing on this, I had it down to 0.4. Uh, let's give that a quick try. But I, there's something else you can do to uh, really help this out. Uh, give the AI a little more freedom on this. And these may look great. Like this one here looks like it's going to be pretty good. Obviously the balloons are in a little different position. She's got both her hands up holding it. Uh, but. Let's see, let's see what it does here. Like this in here is a little more accurate with the background and the balloons, but so yeah, so we do have something that is uh, a lot better composition on here. It doesn't have any of the pixelization. So, but there's something I want to do here. If we want to maintain more structure in the image, we're going to try this. We're going to bring this up to 0.7. And if we just render it now, it's going to introduce some of the pixelization. But all we want is to keep the, the general uh, layout here. So we're going to come down here. We have the starting control step and ending control control step. What these do is it says, hey, uh, I want you to start utilizing the control net at step zero. Um, and then this one here is, says, I want you to end the control step uh, 
at the you know the last step in the in in the sequence in the sta sampling steps, and think of this as a percentage, so zero to one hundred percent. So what I want to do, I'm going to let the AI kind of run amok with the image as it generates it at um, let's say fifty percent. So halfway through the rendering, it's just going to start. It's not going to utilize Control Net anymore, but it'll already have. Uh, the basic structure of the image and it'll just and, and at that point it's just going to use the prompt to continue the image so let's go ahead and hit generate on that and see what it does here <clears throat> we may want to bring that down quite a bit more but if you look at this it is doing something a little bit different almost like a drawing See, it's still doing the pixelization, so I don't like that. I want to, we're going to bring this down to here. Just let it throw out the image, super basic. Let's see, let's do, I don't know, let's do 0.15 right there. Let's see what that does. <coughs> but as you can see, it does, it's trying to maintain that. So it's going to do something basic and then immediately jump into rendering the image as normal. See, and you get, a, you get a pretty cool result with that. So as you can see, it held the image, holding a bowl, it's same basic composition. You lose the background a little bit, it didn't maintain the balloon, so we're gonna, we're gonna try bringing this up, the control way up to 0.1, uh, leaving everything else the same. We're getting balloons in the background on that one, holding the bowl, short hair. That's awesome. So that one, that one actually turned out really well right there. I like that one. So you can mess with these settings. Obviously, you can force it to maintain more of the structure using the control weight, um, and also bringing this up right here. So we can bring that up to maybe 0.25. Let's leave this down. I don't want it that high. We'll do 1.1. We'll render it one more time. See if we can't get the balloons to stay over on the one side. Um, and just run, run free with that here. Let's see what that does. There we go. See the balloons over here. Obviously, it didn't you know whatever's in the background? This thing in the background. Don't really care. It's like a window or something. If we put that in the prompt, maybe uh, it says ice cream with balloons in the background. We're not specifying anything else in the background. If I specified window it probably would put that in there but there you go that's the image right there that's the uh, um, it doesn't have the purple whatever she's got over her shoulder but this is the image you'd implement uh, fix face you know to fix the teeth as it rendered it but we could probably take that seed um, and let's say I really like that one. so we're, what we're gonna do control C we're gonna take that seed put it in here Maybe. There we go. Okay. And um, I think I'll give this a try here. Do that. Restore faces. And let's just see what it does. I don't know if that was, I think that was the first one. So yeah, should hopefully render that same one here as it goes, but we'll see. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yep, teeth look better, eyes look better. Great. Wow, that's a great that's a great image, all generated from that pixel art. So I hope this helps. Uh, again, Control Net gives you a lot of a lot of uh, uh, power over images, uh, manipulating existing images. Um, kind of as an example, I uh, <laughs> uh, I've been messing with an image of uh, I, I was a huge uh, um, Thundercats fan when I was you know a kid. And uh, I found an image of Chitara. Of course, everybody had a crush on Chitara when we were that young. And so I've been working on trying to reverse that cartoon image into something that uh, is a little more realistic. And I'm getting some mixed results. It really depends on what I'm doing. Again, this is a learning process. And uh, uh, some of them turned out pretty decent. You know, uh, others, eh, you know, whatever. Uh, let me see if I can show you the original picture, just so you can at least get an idea of what it is I'm doing. Go ahead and grab that real quick. 
So this is the original image, kind of small, and uh, trying to maintain that same basic composition with this. And uh, so, you know, maybe as a bonus, you know, we could, well, maybe I'll do another video on that sometime by converting cartoons into realistic pictures. But really, the, the process is the same here. Uh, utilizing uh, pixel art, cartoons, whatever, you're going to use Canny for, mo for the most part on this. You can implement other things if you want to try manipulating the image a little bit differently. But really get used to using the start and stop control steps, or you know, the starting and ending control steps and messing with the control weight because that'll give you a lot of control over what the AI is allowed to do <clears throat> and how long you want the control net to uh, process the image before it jumps into just rendering from the prompt. Uh, it's great you can give it the structure and hold that structure just long enough for the AI to maintain it and then it runs free and adds detail. So uh, anyway, if you like this, uh, like and subscribe my channel. Um, I, I know I didn't demonstrate my GPT prompt generator. I think uh, OpenAI is having issues with GPT today. Hopefully I'll be able to do another video where I demonstrate. Um, somebody else was asking about processing multiple prompts. I think I did that in one of my previous videos, but we're gonna do a, a, another video demonstrating some more advanced uh, techniques with the GPT prompt generator that I have. Um, so I hope you like it and we'll talk to you later. See y'all later.